Why do you want to work safely? Now, let me just ask a few people. Why, why do you want to work safely? So you can go home and play. So you can go home and play. I like that one. All right, that's good. How about, uh, how about you, sir? Why do you want to work safely? So I can spend time with my grandkids. So you can spend time with your grandkids. That's pretty cool. My, my dad and my mom, they moved next door to us. Um, I live up in Northern California, and my dad, I grew up in Southern California here, and they moved up when my dad retired. And they, they were there when my son was born. And for 17 years, they lived right next door to us. And that was so cool because, I mean, what a treasure having grandparents there with your kids. And you work safely, you'll get to have that opportunity. That's pretty cool. And boy, I'll tell you, it meant a lot to my kids. It really did. I mean, they were just just thrilled they got to spend time with their grandparents and that's exciting so that's a great one how about you why is safety important to you family family right okay you want to be safe for your family that's a good one how about how about you sir <laughs> family family grandkids all right so you got some young people with grandchildren in this room but uh, my daughter just got married a couple of weeks ago in, in may here and so, but she's all excited about starting a family so who knows i may be next so anyway so why is safety important to you to raise, my kids. raise your kids yeah how, yeah how many kids do you have two two Two-year-old and a four-year-old, they're, they're kind of dependent upon you, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's kind of important that you, you come home at the end of the day. It makes a big difference. By the way, when I talk about safety, once again, I want you to think in terms of 24 hours a day, because to your kids, it doesn't matter if you get hurt on the job or if on your way home, a drunk driver comes across that double yellow line and hits your vehicle and takes you out. You see, to her kids, it doesn't matter if she gets hurt off the job or on the job. All they know is what? Mom's not there. See, you need to think about safety 24 hours a day. It's not something you just turn on at the beginning of the day. It's something you need to do all the time. And by the way, the other plus is your kids, two and four years old, they're going to learn safety by watching you because you drive them around, right? You put them in a car seat and strap them in. Man, I'll tell you, that's where they start learning safety. That's where they start understanding the importance of this. And when they start becoming toddlers, the four-year-old might be doing this. You get them in the car seat every so often, they go, this is uncomfortable, right? You want to go, shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the 10-year-old, you know, two-year-old, the two-year-old's whining. Okay, good, but either way, I'd rather deal with the pain of their whining then than the pain I'd suffer later on if I didn't have them. Because, man, I, I just can't even imagine that. I've got two kids, one's 17, the other's 25, and, man, losing them would just be amazing. So, so what, uh, why is safety important to you, sir? About no pain. Uh, no pain, I like that one. There's a gentleman that I spoke at a cereal manufacturer, I won't tell you which one because I don't want to spoil your breakfast, but um, he, he got injured and he's now passionate about safety. By the way, he became passionate about safety because he never wanted to see anybody else get hurt. He decided after his injury, he didn't want to see anybody else get hurt. And so what he did was he got involved in the safety team and, and he has a passion for safety now that's unbelievable. He told me how he got hurt. He fact, he took me over to the machine and he says, John, here's, here's where I lost my fingers. And this is a machine, and the rollers are spinning at a high speed. It was running at the time. And it's spinning like crazy. And, and he says, and the rollers, by the way, if you look at the, thick, the, the space between the rollers, think in terms of the thickness of a cornflake, OK? So these suckers are spinning at high speed. He says, there was something sticking out of the machine. And at that moment, he said, I, I needed to take that out of there, but I figured I could just reach over and grab it. It was out about eight or nine inches. Figured big deal, right? And he didn't want to shut the machine off. He didn't want to stop the process. I don't know a whole lot about cereal manufacturing, but I'm sure it's like anything else. You stop the thing, it's going to take time to start things back up. So he took a shortcut. Fascinating thing about shortcuts. Was this, mo was this shortcut motivated by laziness, by not caring? No. He was actually taking the shortcut on behalf of whom? His fellow workers and the team. He was willing to what? Just go ahead and pull that out. By the way, he didn't perceive anything could happen. He didn't perceive what was about to happen was going to. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done it. So he reached over, and he started to pull on the little strand. And as he pulled on it, of course, the machine pulled back. The message went from his brain to his hand to what? Tighten up, pull harder. So he does. And then suddenly, what happens? The machine pulls harder, and it's going much faster than he is. And by the time the, his brain sends the message to his fingers to let go, it's too late. He's in the machine. You want to talk about pain? <laughs> that had to hurt. I looked at him and I said, that had to hurt. He said, no, that wasn't the worst part. I said, really? <laughs> if that wasn't the worst part, I'm not sure I want to know what was. He said, the worst part? The worst part was standing there for 45 minutes while they disassembled the machine to take his hand out. I don't know about you, but I'd have been standing there for 45 minutes going, ah! <laughs> screaming. Everybody been going to the plant. What, what, we get a new siren? No, it's Drebinger over there screaming. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, pain, that's a good one to avoid. There's a lot of good reasons you've all stated for working safely. And that's important that you have a reason that's good for you. 
I want you day in and day out to think about those things. For those of you who said family, I've got something that might add to this. I would suggest that if you have family, when you're doing your job or doing anything, you might ask yourself this question. If my family were watching me do the job, how would they want me to do what I'm about to do? If they were there, would they, if, if this guy's family, if they were there, would they have said, go ahead and pull that out of their dad? Nope. <laughs> they said, you might want to turn the machine off, right? Because they're going to be a little more cautious. And as I thought of this process, thinking, hey, what would your family say if you were about to do something? Then I thought of another concept. What if you, when you're about to do anything, ask yourself, is this the way you would want your son or your daughter to do it? Ask yourself that question. My, my guess is, if at that moment you decide to do something the way you'd want your son or daughter to do it, guess what? Probably going to be the safest way you can do it at that point. Probably the safest way we could think of at that moment is what you're about to do. And I would suggest that might be the best approach whenever you do anything, is to do it the way you want your kids to do it. Because you're going to make sure they don't get hurt. Your mind's going to be in the right mindset at that moment. Now, let's see, where did Chris go? Chris, come on back up, all right? Because there's people in the audience going, how did I take your watch? And we're going to show... Don't miss out. Be sure to hit the red button on the lower right and subscribe. That way, every time we release a video, you'll be aware of it.